Listen for the saint. The saint, the hero of a hundred thrilling yarns of breathless adventure and mystery, the Robin Hood of modern crime, the 20th century's gayest buccaneer, already immortalized in 25 best-selling books, half a dozen popular motion pictures and countless magazine stories, The Saint by Leslie Charteris, brought to you now in a new medium, the radio. And the author, Mr. Leslie Charteris himself, will appear on this program personally introducing his famous character. Have you read the latest The Saint, Saint has revolutionized the, the technique picture? of adventure There's writing. New Saint the story Saint has won the friends in every corner of the globe. The Saint, who made such men as P.G. Wodehouse write to the author. I hope you're going to write dozens more Saint stories. They're simply corking. Stories of thrilling adventure that made naturalist William Beebe say, If I were marooned at the bottom of the sea in my bathysphere, I'd choose the Saint stories for company. And humorist Will Cuppy christened the saint... The Prince of Adventurers. The saint's exploits have been translated into every European language. Critics have placed him in the tradition of Sherlock Holmes and Raffles. But actually, he's like neither. He is unique. And so I bring you the only man who can do him justice. The author who first brought him to life. Oh, Mr. Charteris. Yes, coming. But wait. Before Leslie Charteris speaks, let me tell you that he isn't the gray-whiskered author you may have pictured... In spite of all the exciting things he's done, he's still only 33. And yet, he knows what he's writing about. For 14 years, he's been traveling and adventuring all over the world. And more than half the saint's exploits are founded on things he has seen himself. But meet Mr. Leslie Charteris for yourself. Good evening. Mr. Charteris, tell us how you see the saint's character. Well, that uh, is rather a tall order. Let's, uh, Let's say that he has a sense of humor. He never takes anything too seriously, not even himself. Of course, he has his own idealistic motives for poking the ungodly in the snoot, but uh, he really thinks it's quite a lot of fun, too. And you let the public share the fun with him? I hope they do. After all, the world is full of villains who ought to be jumped on, and uh, I suppose most people would really like to take a share in the jumping. But since most of them aren't quite so quick on the draw as they'd like to be, they don't mind letting the saint do it for them. (laughs) I know just what you mean. I've often felt that way myself. So which of these adventures are you bringing us tonight? The Miracle Tea Party. The Miracle Tea Party? (laughs) Yes, it sounds screwy, doesn't it? But it explains itself as we go along. Well, who else is in it beside the saint? Uh, There's Patricia Holm, of course. She's the saint's beautiful companion in crime, isn't she? You could put it that way, but... Anyway, she's uh, been in most of the saint's adventures. Then uh, there's Furnack. Oh, you mean Inspector John Henry Furnack of the Detective Bureau? Yes. He's quite an old favorite in the saint series, isn't he? The saint certainly has given him a lot of gray hairs, though. Well, they've had a few battles, but they really think quite a lot of each other. Now, on this occasion... Furnack's indigestion was what really started the whole thing. His indigestion? Yes. Oh, he was in all kinds of trouble. The New York police commissioner was running him ragged about some espionage business. And, of course, the pains in his tummy weren't helping him a bit. I suppose the story really began when the commissioner was sitting in his office, waiting for Inspector John Henry Furnack to come up on the carpet. Yes? Inspector Furnack is outside, Commissioner. Oh, send him in. You sent for me, Commissioner? Yes. I'm still waiting for your report on that espionage business out at the airplane factory. Well, my men are doing their best, sir. And you better get some men who can do better. I promised the FBI months ago we'd crack this case. But, sir... You're laying down on the job, Furnack. I want action, I want it fast. Yes, sir. And another thing. Why haven't you rounded up this man, Simon Templer, fellow they call the saint? Well, you can't arrest a man without evidence, Commissioner. Then get some. Everybody knows the man's a crook, one of the most notorious crooks in the country. Well, we've never been able to prove it, Commissioner. Ah, in a minute, you'll be telling me you've fallen for this stuff about him being the modern Robin Hood. Well, the things he does generally seem to turn out all right. He's even helped me a lot of times. Oh, Fernack, you must be getting soft in the head. What's the matter with you? Are you sick or something? Well, I... well as a matter of fact, sir, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm suffering from indigestion. Indigestion? 
Well, why don't you get something for it? Why don't you get some miracle tea? Is that the stuff they advertise on the radio? Yes. Why don't you buy some? Well, I, I will, sir. I'll, I'll stop in at a drugstore on my way home. Yes, sir. Good evening. What can I do for you? Well, give me some... Give me a package of miracle tea. One package of miracle tea? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, here you are, sir. And, uh... Isn't there something else? What do you mean, something else? What are you looking at me like that for? Come on, give me that stuff and take your money. Hey, hey, wait. Hey, mister, come back here. I made a mistake. Oh, he's gone. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Osbert. Uh, Mr. Osbert, quick. What's the trouble out there? Oh, a terrible mistake, sir. A customer came in and I, I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> on down the street. Hey, hey, you, stop! Oh. Oh, well, well, well. If it isn't my old friend, John Henry Fernack. Oh, the saint. Now, what did you do that for? I'm ashamed of you, Henry, rolling in the gutter at your age. Well, you hit me. You... I'm walking down the street a lot, and you hit me, Oh, saint. don't be an ass, Henry. I was just passing by when I saw a bloke in the distance whacking you over the bean with a piece of lead pipe. I ran after him. And, and... he got away, huh? Yes, I thought of asking him to come and have a drink on it, but he ran too fast. Was he a friend of yours? I don't know what it's all about. I I just came out of that drugstore back there, and I, I heard footsteps behind me, and I... Oh, Lord, my head. You better go home, Henry, and rest that dented dome. Taxi. Oh, taxi. Now, be careful of him, driver. He's very fragile. Sorry I can't go with you, Henry, but I'm late already. I've got a date with someone much more beautiful than you. Well, I suppose I ought to thank you. But I'm still not sure that you didn't sock me, Simon Templer. 1444 Prospect Place. So long, Henry. Call me anytime you want a bodyguard. Hey, wait, Henry, you dropped your package. Ah, oh, well, I'll just have to keep his little package with me until the morning. <laughs> Hello, Simon. You're late. Oh, I ran into a little excitement on the way, darling. What's in the box you're carrying? Orchids? Now, Pat, give me back that box. It's not mine. Well, tea. A package of tea. Miracle tea for indigestion. Indigestion? Ha <laughs> ha. So your sins are catching up with you. Pat, now don't open it. It belongs Simon, to Simon. Some... Where did you get all this money? What money? The money that's in this package of tea, it's full of thousand-dollar bills. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. Five thousand dollars? Miracle tea. <laughs> what an excellent name for it. Simon, where do you get this tea? Believe it or not, Inspector Fernack dropped it and I picked it up. Inspector Fernack? Mm-hmm. A few moments ago, I found him being beaten up by some plug ugly. I rescued the poor old buzzard and poured him into a taxi. Then I found this package lying on the sidewalk. Uh, this money, Simon. You think it's real? No doubt of it. Maybe you've grabbed poor old Fernack's life savings. Well, he has a bank account, darling. Police inspectors don't carry their worldly wealth around in packets of tea. Graft. Simon, maybe he's taking graft. John Henry, no. He's so honest it runs out of his ears. Then what? Well, let's see. John Henry had a pain in his tum-tum and stopped into Osbert's drugstore on the way home. My hunch is that he was handed this packet by mistake. My further hunch is... But right now, there must be considerable agitation going on in Mr. Osbert's drugstore. Mr. Osbert, please, sir. How was I to know it wasn't our man? Come over here, you fool. But how was I to know it was Inspector Fernick of the police department? He, he, he came in so, so quietly. 
He lowered his voice just like one of our own men. I said, come here. I ran after him. I, I almost had the package back, sir, but when this other fellow came along and he... You was... incompetent fool! Oh, please, Mr. Hospin, it was a mistake. This other fellow was twice my size and he killed me. That, my friend, might have saved me the trouble. Come here. Oh, no. No! Please, No! <laughs> Darling, I wish you'd explain. Where are we going? Osbitt's Drugstore, in search of further miracles. Well, there's the drugstore right over there. Now, come in with me, darling. What fun. Oh, good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Is Mr. Osbitt around? Uh, uh, what's it about? It's about this package of tea. I'd, uh, I'd like to return it. A friend of mine bought it, but decided he wouldn't risk taking it. So I said, uh, Fernac, old pal, why waste a perfectly good half dollar? I'll take it back and change it for you. Uh, did, did you say your friend's name was Fernac? Uh, yes, you, you probably know him. Great detective and all that sort of thing. Oh, I'm sure we can change this package for you, sir. If, uh, now, if you wait right here, sir, I'll get Mr. Osborne. Simon, his eyes popped out of his head when you mentioned Fernac. It worked, my sweet. You notice how he grabbed the packet and scuttled up those back stairs? Osbert must be back there. You stay here, darling, in the store while I see what goes on. Oh, Mr. Osbert. What are you bursting in for? Your job is down below in the store. It's Fernax's package, sir. A man just brought it in the store, wants to exchange it. Fernax's package? Give it to me. Ah, you're crazy. There's no money in here. But, but he said... Well, the fellow Shh. said... Listen. Who's there? Hello, little people. Hope I'm not interrupting. Oh, don't bother searching that box, Mr. Osbert. I removed the do-re-mi and sealed it up again. Who are you? I know who he is. I've heard about that whistle. The saint. That's who he is. The saint? So... You see, I want to learn about your business, Comrade Osbert. I don't know what your racket is yet... Obviously, it's something big if you can give away five grand with a four-bit packet of tea. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. Take your hand away from that pocket, Osbitt. <laughs> Miss me, old boy. Very bad manners, but if you want to play rough... Oh. Next, please. Let me alone. I, I didn't do it. Simon. Simon, are you all right? All right. I'm having a beautiful time. Osbitt pulled a gun, so I had to put them both to sleep. Come on, darling. Let's go downstairs again and look after the shop. <laughs> Let me have ten cents worth of cough drops, please, and hurry it up. Ten cents worth? Yes, sir. Here you are. Here, here. Not all that. Only ten cents worth, I said. Special bargain price today, sir. Three pounds for a dime. I'd like some razor blades. Now, why don't you try this excellent electric razor? But I don't want an electric razor. Exactly the same price as the blades. We're selling electric razors for a dime today, sir. Here you are. But I don't want an electric razor. A dollar bottle of Poire de Paris perfume, please. Here you are, miss. It's reduced to a quarter today. And please accept these bath salts. Oh, really? It's very kind of you. Don't mention it. It's Mr. Osbitt's birthday today, and he's in the mood. <laughs> Simon, you're giving the whole store away. It may be loads of fun, darling, but where is it getting us? Not very far yet, but I've really been hanging around here in the hopes that someone at... No, not a customer. What a revolting specimen. I wonder how much he'd charge to haunt a house. Out of the way, darling. Yes, sir. What will it be? Razor blades? Shaving cream? Hot water bottle? I haven't seen you before. Then you should admire the view. Where's Ossie? Uh, Ossie? Yeah. Oh, dear old Ossie's lying down for a while. Got a headache or something. Say, have you tried our passion flower lipstick? Cut the comedy. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Here, give Ossie this prescription. And find out when my... my medicine will be ready. Come back at six o'clock this evening. I think your your medicine will be ready for you then. Six o'clock? Okay. Simon, what did that man give you? This piece of paper. He called it a prescription. Well, after all, this is a drugstore. Well, look at it, Pat. Ever see a doctor write out a prescription like that? It's a drawing. A floor plan of a building. Now, I suppose, we have to go back to burglary. No, my pet, I think we've run into something bigger than burglars. What then, Simon? I don't know. 
I think I'll go upstairs again and investigate our sleeping beauties. Come on, Patricia. Roll over, Ossie. Let's see what you've got in your pockets. Ah, here's a wallet. What's inside, Simon? Oh, very interesting. Uh, Mr. Osbitt has a driving license and a credit card... Both made out in the name of Baron and Nescu, 577 Park Avenue. I wonder if Ossie has been leading a double life. Anything interesting in the desk? Mm, just these papers. They look like a lot of radio commercials about miracle tea. Let's see them. Well, this doesn't look very sinister. Let's take them along anyway. Your babies are waking up, Simon. Oh, I've had enough exercise for today. Come on, darling, let's go. I think we've earned a drink. Make mine a miracle tea and soda. Simon, we've had dinner. Why aren't we doing something about Baron and Eskew instead of sitting at home listening to the radio? Well, aren't you satisfied, darling? We're hot on the trail of one of the most ingenious rackets I've ever heard of. Money flows like water. Plans are handed over a drugstore counter. And packets of tea get spiked with thousand-dollar bills. What you really mean is that this thing has still got you buffalo. On the contrary, my deductive genius is just getting into high gear. You know, I'm convinced that there's some connection between these miracle tea broadcasts and the racket we're on to. That's why I've been studying all these radio commercials you found in Osbitt's office. Just been waiting for the program to come on the air, and I, I think it's due right now. Good evening, everybody. Folks, why not try Miracle Tea, the amazing health beverage which has brought relief to so many sufferers. Let me read you a few testimonials. Mrs. G.K. of Brooklyn writes, for years I don't I've see what this radio program has to do with Osbert's drugstore and the money and the plans. The don't you? Listen. And Mr. J.B. of Philadelphia writes, Miracle Tea has indeed performed miracles for me. Miss L.G. of Trenton writes... Pat, I was right. I got it. A code signal. It's one of the neatest I ever came across. Code signal? Yes, it's so gorgeously simple I almost missed it. The one thing I couldn't figure out was how the agents of this ring knew when to visit Osbitt's drugstore. Well, this is how it's done. The initials of the operative the big boss wants to get in touch with are given over the radio. Through the testimonials? Exactly. No detective on earth could trace the connection between a radio broadcast and the, the particular person who listens to it. Well, yes, after all, anybody can go into a drugstore and buy a patent medicine without attracting attention. Yes, and then the package contains the wages of work well done, like the one Fernak got hold of, or instructions for another job. Darling, you're wonderful. Don't you ever amaze yourself? Constantly. Give me the phone. Whom are you calling? I'm going to organize a little tea party of my own. Inspector Fernack speaking. Hello, John Henry. And how is the little tum-tum this evening? Simon, haven't you anything better than do than to call me up at this time of night and make funny remarks? Now, seriously, Henry, if you're really interested in cleaning up this espionage business, just rush one of your squads to Osbert's Drugstore, the place where you bought your miracle tea. Hey, are you kidding me? For once, I'm not, Henry. Unless I'm very much mistaken, a few other guys are going to be there shopping for miracle tea tonight. You'd better pick up everybody who buys it and hold them for questioning. If I thought... But you never have. Don't spoil your record, Henry. Just do as I say and I'll get in touch with you later. I may have the big shot for you then. But who is the big shot of this ring? Well, I'm not certain. But I'll bet Doe that Baron and Eskew could tell us something. I think I'll just run over and ask him. What was the address? Uh, 577 Park Avenue. If you're not back in an hour, I'll meet you there with an ambulance. <laughs> I'm very sorry, sir, but the Baron is not at home. No? No. Who's playing that typewriter down the hall, then? I'm sorry, sir, but the Baron is not at home. Oh, you repeat yourself, Clarence. Oh! Sorry I had to clout you, but you really were getting monotonous. Now to find the dear Baron. Hello? Station DLPK. Give me Mr. Vernon, the announcer of the Miracle Tea program, please. Hello, Vernon. Here are the testimonials for the 10 o'clock broadcast. Are you ready? Mrs. B.C. of Los Angeles writes, Since drinking your tea, I have become... Hold on. Hold on a moment, Vernon. 
Good evening, Baron. Put your hand over that mouthpiece. What are you doing here? Don't move. Do you feel this gun in your back, Baron? Talks faster than you can. Now get back on that phone and repeat exactly what I tell you. Hello. Hello, uh, Vernon. Tell him... Tell him you're changing the copy completely. Uh, Vernon, I'm... Uh, I'm changing the copy completely. Tell him to make it read like this. There are many testimonials in our files, and they all praise Miracle T. Hello. Make the ten o'clock commercial read. Uh, there are many testimonials in our files, and... Uh, and they all praise Miracle T. Stop reaching for that desk drawer, Baron. It makes me nervous. Now say, all of you, everybody, why not buy Miracle T tonight? Go on, say it. Uh, all of you, everybody, why not buy Miracle T tonight? Now tell him that's all. Uh, the, that's all, Vernon. All right. Now you can turn around. What is the meaning of this? I should say about 15 years for you, Baron. Or would you prefer me to call you Osbert? Osbert? Mm-hmm. I recognized your voice the instant I heard it, in spite of your false whiskers. Besides, I took the liberty of looking through your wallet while you were taking a, a siesta in the shop. Very smart, aren't you, Mr. Templer? I get along. You've been running one of the most efficient espionage rackets in the country, haven't you? Are you crazy? Crazy enough to recognize plans of an airplane factory disguised as a prescription. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to leave that to Inspector Fernack. His men are already at your drugstore. They've probably picked up Miss G.K., Mr. L.G., and Mrs. B.C. already. And in a few minutes, when your 10 o'clock program goes on the air, there'll be a whole flock of dyspeptics rolling in to join the tea party. I have an uncanny memory for people who interfere with me, Simon Templer. Well, while you're thinking it over in Alcatraz, don't forget to tell the other boys to look out for me. Tell them about the saint. Well, that certainly had me on the edge of my chair, Mr. Charteris. But it seems that Simon did all the work and Inspector Fernack got all the credit. You know, uh, in a business like the Saints, you can't advertise too much. Besides, he doesn't own a private jail. No, of course. Well, now, what are you going to tell us about next week? Well, there was a man who was snatching loot out of sunken ships. That sounds interesting. I called that story Saint Overboard. There was a guy named Vogel who was pretending to finance a certain Professor Yule the inventor of an extra deep-sea diving suit. Remember that exciting moment when Simon was on Vogel's yacht and Professor Yule was going down to make a test? Five hundred and seventy-five feet. Splendid. Professor, can you hear me down there? Yes, Mr. Vogel. I'm on the bottom. Everything is working splendidly. Give me another 20 feet of cable. I'm going to try to walk a bit. Something's gone wrong with the oxygen supply. Quick, bring me up. Hmm, the winch is jammed. Hello? Hello down there. Professor, what can we do? Saint! Get away from that winch, Vogel, or this gun might go off. Now watch me start it. Simon! Look out behind you! I'm afraid we'll have to wait until next week to hear this new story entitled Saint Overboard. Another thrilling adventure in this program by Leslie Charteris. A program in which the author himself each week sets the scene for a new story of the saint. The part of the saint is played by the noted English actor of stage, screen, and radio, Dennis Green. And so, until next week... Listen for the saint... <laughs> 